So here we are seeing the verification step is only verifying one particular invocation. Here the client mock is what? It is your mock, right? And on the client mock, you are saying the gate user is called with the argument integer one, right? Because here is the update integer is being called. And here we have seen that the client mock gate user or any values, any integer value, it's going to return a particular user object. And then uh, what happened is that you create this updater with this particular mock object, and then you call. So obviously this client dot gate user one should be passed as true. Okay. Now here in the verify right, what happened is that some case the objects under test can be having like multiple mock instances. And on the multiple mock instances or single mock instance or dependent object, there may be methods are called in a particular order. For example, say that in the client, we are getting that user object, updating the, making changes to the user object model. And then we are again calling the update user model, right? So then in that case, the both the method are called and both the method are called need to be called in a sequence. First, you get the request from external service, then you update the user object into the external service, right? So then we can, you know, or locally you are, you know, saving that using a, you know, repository mock or whatever. So here in the verify sequence, what you're doing is that you are saying that in this order, first this mocks, get user value 2 will be called then the repo mock save user value will be called with that user okay so here we are verifying the sequence in which that particular mocks are being called okay and now if the sequence is not matched then you can get very good exception so it's a verification flex and call are not executed exactly match the verification sequence so what are the matchers this is your matcher mock object which is equal to two and this is like equal to this object right but your call has been happened with the gate user one and this is a different user object that has been called okay so this way we can easily identify where the error is so what is my expectation and what is the actual sequence of call that is happening. So that you can also verify with the mock verify sequence object. Okay. Now, what we normally do, right, in our test cases, we try to create the mock object into our before each. So that means before your each unit test case run, your objects are mostly mock. So here two objects are there. One is the external client and one is the repository object. That is being called. And say this is being called from a service or some kind of Now creation of the mock or creation of the controller object um, is kind of expensive, right? Every time you have to create another object, another proxy object. So instead of this pattern, what we can follow the other pattern where we know this mock object need to be done only once. So instead of writing previously, we can simply put private val, make it them an instance variable and make the mock, correct? And also create your controller like this. Now, what you can do in the before each, we can reset our mock. That means whatever, when, then, or verify when whatever you know behavior we are expecting out of the in the previous call will be in the previous test case will be reset and in this test case only thing we are going to be very a change if at all required is the behavior changes that we are calling right when that particular method has been called so here in the mock thing it will be the every call or whatever calls this will be the return that the syntax we can use. Okay. So that's how we can, you know, refactor our creation of mocks will be created only once for that particular test case. And only you going to be clear out the mock or resetting the mock. 
that one of the good practice we can follow. Now, if we have our classes that have some state, right? It may happen, it has some configuration value or something, or maybe that. Say so now they're saying that this is like a design view, right? So in design view, okay. So you're creating the object, you're clearing the mocks out. Okay. And design view, we are creating the object uh, each step that we can do. And then here, what I see the asset that asset that is coming from your assertion, asset js class, right? So instead of doing the assertion dot assert equals, etc., we can do asset that. We can say which object, which field we wanted to do assertion is equal to. So here we are saying that particular, this is like a UI component. So UI component has a button and that has a caption called high, right? Now on the say, UI, we have called like check change button, right? So then the change button, another button has been, or say maybe we can say disable button or something. Then the caption may be changed to something else, okay? That's how you can also test the state of those things by creating the class with state within the before each. Because here the state need to be reset for each of the your test cases. Any questions so far? How can you use mock framework as such instead of mockito and wherever we can use the mock? So, so is that in our uh, specific mm. to our uh, budget, we have to use this mock K, right? We can so, we can propose to use this mock K, uh, mock mock K, mock K library instead of this mock it okay. We can propose that, right? But before that, we have to read the documentation also a little bit, and then we can do that because the benefit of this compared to normal mockito is that it can able to mock the final classes out of the box without much of any changes okay. now in case of if we we don't require the this particular section uh, because we are not using Spring, we are using Mockito. Uh, uh, sorry, no, uh, Micronaut. So in Micronaut, we know that instead of Spring integration, our uh, test we just need to put the Micronaut instead of saying Spring test, we put Micronaut test, and then we using Android mock. But how do we have to use the mock, right? So, for example, here is a basic configuration where we are using Jackson mapper, object mapper, object, right, as a bean. Okay. So, here if you wanted to register the Kotlin model that they have put there. Now, here what you're going to have is that this spring configuration class, right, it will not able to let you create the configuration problem. Because it will say that this configuration class may not be final because it is not a final, right? So in that case, what you have to use, you have to use all open dependency, right? And also in plugin, you have to use the spring. If you are using Maven for that matter, then you can use your spring with Mocky2. Okay. And normally what we do in spring is that we do for it can support constructor based injection right so here your controller same kind of previous example which has one repository and one client okay so again if you wanted to do mock we can easily do in the unit test case mock mock and then we can create our object and we can use our constructor base in the this is like a protein class uh, a normal class controller and here we can you know pass this dependent mock objects. 
Now, there is another important thing is that we know the data classes, right? We use the data class, right? Here, there we don't have to write data setter or it gives us by default the constructor, right? We are familiar with the data class, right? In Kotlin? Yes. 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 Okay. Now, how can we use data classes to write cleaner test cases, right? So normally in assert that, what we do is assert that either we can put an object is equal to another object or we can choose the field, right? So normally when we do the assertion, how we do the assertion? We do the assertion based on a single field, either ID, user, name on the data class, right? So then I find that I have many big assertion blocks where we write many assertion to asserting one object is equal to another object based on their individual property are same or not, right? This is how we do the assertion currently, right? When our response object comes, right, or when you get the result from the method call, we check whether it is not null, whether its collection is not null, then we get a particular object out of the collection index or the individual properties. So here what we are doing, we are individually all the properties that are there. For each of the properties, we write our assertion and then compare with the another value, correct? So instead of doing this, if you can use the two objects the same or not, that you can use with the data class. So normally data class, what you can do, either we can set up the properties right here is the design, so design ID, user ID, name, etc. this is given. And then you are doing the assert that actual design or actual result with the expected result, right? And if there is any differences, right, it can be easily understood by the error message. It will say the comparison is failed and it will print out the both object. But say this is like an expected object. I'm expecting a cat, but it's like a different ID. ID is been one, here is been two, right? So this kind of very descriptive error message we can do. And what I, we can do, we can instead of writing like 10, 15, depend, so these numbers will increase depending on the number of the attributes I have or the properties I have in my class. So if I have 15, I have to write 15 assertion, right? Instead of that, I can simply equate the object to object and find out what the differences are from the error messages. So that we can easily use the data classes or assertion. Similar to this particular theme, right? Uh, we can also assert a list. Out here, what is happening? We are asserting actual design, which is like a collection or a list. Then we are checking with that list. Now we can compare the whole list or we can check whether a certain objects or certain objects are present in there or not. So right now, if I need to do that, what I can do, I can, you know, go to the list and then I can stream it. Then I can compare and filter and find whether there is any optional find any is present. And then I'm going to check whether that is present or not from that optional class. Instead of doing all of that for each of the objects, right, we can contain exactly or contain any or this kind of things I can write. So now this contain exactly saying that this list is consisting of two design object, right? With these properties. Now, if they are not in the same order, right? Then the exception can be thrown. First thing that we are seeing, or if they are in the same order, but some elements are not matching, that we can also see. And also some of the elements are not found or some of the elements are different that you can also see. So here the assertion, we are asserting a collection of list. With that, what you can say, we can say this list is consisting of these two elements. And these two elements are appearing in this order and they have is this kind of like properties that are there. So using data classes, I can also and assert it, I can also assert list. 
instead of doing the for each object like that. Now, so what happened? So a single object, we can also use some assertions. Write that first assertion statement is saying, OK, I have this object is equal to ignoring the given field. I can skip certain fields which may not have certain data at this present moment for my test cases. So I'm expecting an actual design object may be evaluated by excluding the ID field. Or alternatively, I can choose to compare only some of the fields, right? The actual and design object only need to be compared, say, name and ID, only based on that. So I can also find soon, like, depending on my test cases, it not need to be exactly matched for all of this. It can be matched based on some of the fields object or excluding some of the rest of the field object that we can compare. Similarly, we can compare list. OK, then using element comparator, ignoring fields ID, and we compare the two list of matching or using element comparator on field that means only on name they will be compared so that is the another advanced assertion we can write second what we also do is uh, we create lots of helper function right in our test cases to create uh, objects right create lesson create lesson for with metadata or something like that, right? So normally what we do, we take some values on those fields and we create them, right? Single line, we can create them. And for different element, like a lesson one without child or lesson one with child, we can create those objects using data classes and normally what else we can queue instead of inline we write out of this we can simply write the one helper function using fun keyword right and we can put some default value out here if we require to okay and then the values has been put out here okay so if the user is not wanted to send some of the values it will be set with the default value or some of the default value you can set with this so how we can use that we can use the create design because all of them four fields like id name date and tag has a default values or we can override the certain values as my test cases may be i can write id or name right now internal implementation i can also be replaced with a builder pattern right out here now i can also create this function right to create all the three design objects and i can put those values out here and whatever the properties i like to override that i can override now here what is happening the create design has certain uh, sub element right so for example it has a description so again that is again calling another helper uh, helper object creation button which is itself is calling another helper object creation button the translation for certain language and some description okay now this we can also you know uh, extract that in case of we are using the same kind of uh, helper pattern across classes right I use the same lesson creation or course creation, etc. in the controller test cases, in my service test cases, right? Instead of doing that, what you can do, I can create an object like create utils, and there I can put all the objects, okay? And that objects I can use out here into across test cases. So I am not duplicating the same code again and again. Okay, 
So whatever is highlighted into the blue, all the creation things, right? Visible state or animal state, I can put out here in a separate class, include the class into my discussion and use that. Okay. Sometimes what happens is when you have like a assertions, right? Normally, what you need to do is so say, for example, I'm seeming simple parsing logic of a date. I'm, I'm creating an utility function. Now, I like to test with the different scenarios, like right? date with timestamp, date without timestamp, date uh, field is blank, date field is null, date field is an invalid date also, or from a string, I'm converting in a local date type, or maybe the date uh, string format is not correct okay like that so if that way i need to test case what we generally do is we either write this all the test cases all the assertion statement in a single test case or normally we break down into multiple test cases right if we put in a single test cases if anything fails it is very problematic to determine the which one is failed okay whether this one is failed or this one is failed right which one is actually failed that we need to know right so in that case or alternatively i am writing multiple test cases for the same method right is there any better way to instead of you know managing the multiple test cases uh, test uh, functions right test methods or use a common test method just to change the input data separately so what is happening is only thing is the input data is getting change of all of those assertions right and the expected outcome data is also getting changed based on the input data so there i can use the parameter as testing so for that say i have this this sample data class being created this is like a test which is having one input and one expected output. One is string, another is a token. Now here we have parameterized test. And now parameterized test will be requiring a provider. Provider who is going to be providing the data for the parameterized test. And that same data can be used for validation, right? So here I can what is the benefit out of this let's let's first understand the syntax so method source method source is saying that okay for this method i'm going to using this uh, particular provider and that particular provider is nothing but a method so that method will provide me the test data okay and what is the method is providing you method is providing me with a collection of Test data which has one input and one expected output. Okay, so then what is this providing is a stream of test data, right? So, what will be the argument? So, John Murray, what we don't put into our test cases, we don't put any arguments, right? So, now when you're using parameter as test, we use the test data as the test data class. The test data class is the inside uh, value that is the input and the expected token. So then I can you know reduce that by assert that into is equal to this particular test data input value and if value. So here we can do is we are setting the input value and this is the my expecting output values that are there. Okay. So benefit of parameterized test is what is I don't have to manage multiple test cases, this method rather. And for each of the data, there is like a simple uh, another single test method is on the runtime or single test invocation on the runtime being reported with that particular input or output data. So I don't have to manage those test cases. Neither I have to cram all those uh, consolidated, all those assertion statements in a single test case. I'm not able to find which one is failing. I can simply look into the report and find out which test case is failing for my input and my output data. 
and then here you can see this is like parameter is test so based on the number of records in this test is five so there will be five invocation going to happen on the test data there is exactly showing what is your input and what is your output based on your test data and this is my input and this is my expected outcome okay and it exactly shows which one is actually failed this one is actually failed because it's not matched so two benefits you easily locate which one is failed you don't have to manage multiple test methods so we have uh, initialize the image test cases we have started with this kind of like a structure and now my refactor test case look like this so what we have learned we use the mock we learn to use first of all creating the instance variable for mock and an object only use before each when you need to reset the test then I can either use the Mockito framework or simply use also either every or simply use the mock like Mockito like syntax when then return. Then I can also use the assert that or assert equal, etc. Okay. So how we can improve my test cases? Test case lifecycle I can control with test instance per class, which will help me to reduce the number of test class object being created for mocking uh, in place of mock it i can use a mock a okay naming and grouping of test cases i can use a backtick to give better test names which are easily readable i can also group the test cases are created for a single method into a nested test class i choose the mock k junit 5 and assert day to write better test libraries I can use leverage the data classes for equal assertion instead of putting all the assert statements that are there, right? One by one by one. Or I can use the helper method or a builder pattern to create objects and use a single object for storing all the helper classes, helper function which creates the object and use across my discourses for different layers. I can also leverage the parameter test cases at the case maybe where the input is only getting changed and we have like a multiple output instead of managing the multiple method. Spring integration at this present moment is not helpful, but we have seen how we can do the init test cases or rather not any test cases, rather integration test cases with the micro So any questions so far? One question I have is uh, while while in test case we are using a function like you go to previous slides I have one doubt not here yes here sir after this one. So here what we are do, trying to do means like we are creating a function and then this is also a helper function the designer hmm. this function is just creating an object right design class object which is a data class okay right now here in this function what happened is that all the fields values have some default values okay so i can use the function as it is like create design if mm -hmm. i need to override certain values i can override certain values using create design and then override the name parameters okay overriding the values means not with this one the design one yeah so design one is a constructor right it takes id user id name date created and tags 
okay. for example i want to create one design with certain tag name say for example uh say it is a design for uh prototype design for ui of course lesson right mm -hmm. i wanted to create another tag uh with say design for our prototype then i can put this prototype is for cosmos then this prototype is for the reporting right okay so by default if i don't pass anything right uh so say they say the name of the design is something cat will be by default we say so instead of cat i say they are sending it as a fox right so that you can easily override and you don't have to set the other field values Okay. So uh, we don't need an init function here, right? No, no, this is not talking about init function or anything. This is talking about the, if you wanted to create the object, what you do, you, you can create the object as many times you require, right? Correct? Right? Yes, yes where the difference is basically some of the parameters right so it's saying that instead of doing that you can simply create one uh, helper function and then you can create a default object or if you can override make it like a cat to fox or something you can do that okay okay mm -hmm. and also after that it's suggesting that instead of you know uh, putting same helper function in every test cases you can create a utility class like creation util or creation test util and then put all your creation function inside that okay okay mm -hmm. any other questions if not then let's pause the session